when you stop to think about the story of Toastmasters, you may wonder, how did we get here? Toastmasters started in the basement in Santa Ana, California, of a YMCA. The basement of a YMCA. Now, I don't know what your experience with basements has been. My experience has been basements are kind of a dirty, nasty place where you put a lot of garbage. You put a lot of stuff. So just imagine, just think about that first meeting when people came in to this new organization about public speaking. And they walk in, and they're walking into a basement. What would the reaction might have been? Maybe something like, whoa! Is that a centipede down there, Ralph? Jeez. What the heck? It's like, it's like a rat in the corner over there. I mean, is this sanitary? Are you going to keep on doing this? You know, I mean, Ralph, when you said you wanted to have it in a nice, intimate environment, the YMCA, I wasn't exactly thinking about a place that looks like cell block number nine, you know? Look at this one. We're, we're sitting here. We're around a card table. We're on a card table, Ralph, and we're on a card table with lawn chairs. I think there are lawn chairs, like, sitting around, and I don't know. I, I don't, it's a great idea, a talking club, but maybe rethink it a little bit. Maybe wait until you've got enough pull to be able to get at least the ground floor. Maybe the first floor or the second floor, you know. Basement. I don't know if you want to start there. So from the beginning to the basement, it's pretty amazing that anything actually happened after that. And then there was a name in the first place. When Ralph put this whole club together, he had to come up with a name. But why this name? I mean, think about it. You gotta presume the first time people heard the name, they weren't just wild about it. They said, they probably said something like, you may have heard, and people may have mentioned when they come to your clubs, Toastmasters? What? Toastmasters is an appliance. Toastmasters is an appliance. I mean, it's not really a club. It's not really a place to, I mean, it's not really what grill masters, toastmasters, it just doesn't inspire me to get up here and do a speech. It just doesn't, doesn't work for me. I mean, of all the names you could think of, I mean, why, why toast? I mean, why not bagels? Why not uh, egg muff muffins? Why not, uh, why not uh, pancakes? You know, pancakes masters maybe would be a, would be a better, well, why toast in the first place? Uh, and, okay, I get it, Ralph. Okay, it's something to do with drinking. You, you drink a toast. Well, it seems to me if we have a place called Toastmasters, we're going to have wine oaks, like winding up all over from the YMCA coming down here, expecting a little bit of a free booze, a little bit of a free handout. It just doesn't scream public speaking to me, you know? It just doesn't quite work. Well, somehow it was named Toastmasters. And then somehow, eventually, the club started spreading out. The idea did start to spread, even from the basement. Somehow, the idea spread. It started to go around until finally went over into Canada. And all of a sudden, they were in. They were, had a new, their new problem. What to call the club? Because it wasn't just Toastmasters anymore. It was a bigger club. So you have this sort of discussion. But there is kind of an issue with Canada. And it might have come up in the discussion. So, okay, Ralph, you, you said we're now going international. Okay, fine. But does Canada really count as international? I mean, if you want to be international, don't you have to be across a body of water or something? I mean, England's international, Europe's international, but but Canada? I mean, Hawaii's more international than Canada. Canada's a place you go up to for a, a camping trip. You just pop across the border. It's a place you go up there when you don't want to deal with the war. It's not an international place. All right, all right, call international. I'll tell you what, Ralph, since you like this name Toastmaster so much, you're wedded to it, we can't do anything to change it. I just stick the name international after it. And it's called Toastmasters International, just to push that point in people, just in case they don't get it. And then you'll have your international club. And that's what they did. And finally, it grew enough, expanded enough, that it did go to England, it did go to Europe, it did go all the way out there. And it all started in a basement. Now, when it started, it also had a manual. And there's a manual. Not the manual I have today. Interesting enough, the manual at that time had 12 projects. 
as opposed to the days. Ten projects You're familiar with the CC man. Which is interesting. It also had a point where he mentioned, talked about whether you're a critic or evaluator, implying being a critic. It's the same thing as being an evaluator, which today we think of as a no-no. You aren't a critic or you aren't an evaluator. The question is, were there some enlightened Toastmasters at that time trying to enlighten Ralph to his, his oversight? How many people said to Ralph, you know, 12 projects, that's just too many. Just too many. There's no way. Uh, think about it. You've got 10 fingers, 10 toes, 10 projects. That makes sense. You know, you want to stick around with 12. Okay, fine. Tell you what. Ralph, well, my hunch is somewhere down the line, they're going to take two of those projects away. They're just going to make it 10. <laughs> just a much better. And somehow, Toastmaster did come to me. Somehow it made it. Somehow, even though they called his back critic and evaluator, and they're criticizing the evaluator, and probably evaluating the critic, somehow they moved past that, they developed, they grew, they brought it to here today. So how did Toastmasters come out to be? Well, it was a vision. A vision of a man, a man called Ralph. Got things started, they wanted to make things grow. And no matter how silly the name, no matter how dirty and dreadful and really centipede-filled beginnings, he had a vision, and he made it happen. We're all the better for it today. Toastmasters International. It was interesting to learn the, the history of Toastmasters. And I love, and I love your humor. And I also like how you structure the speech that throughout and also on the end you have the callback and have different pieces come back that is tied, tied up into a very nice bowl. Um, the things to think about would be one, I think a couple places you want to push the humor but I feel like you can either push it harder or just approach it in a different way. I feel like there's some couple of places kind of caught in the middle. Um, and I, you have an example here, but it, and also each of the humorous parts kind of stop at, well, somehow it just happened. So it's like, oh, I just lose the whole power at the end of, right after the punchline. And one, one thought I have is to structure the speech Almost like, because I like your phrase about, I, work, I really want to ask Ralph this and this and this. Maybe use that as a, as a phrase, repeating throughout. I really wanted to ask him why he's doing this and this and this. I really wanted to ask him this and this and this. And really kind of instead of saying, oh, somehow it happened to transition to the next uh, segment, use that as a phrase to connect different pieces. And, I, and, and there's also, I see the opportunity, you use that phrase to kind of push even further and show like you're almost like angry at him. Who would think about have 12 speeches? Like, who would ever thought about that? I really want to ask him, where did you come up with 12? Is that because we have 12 months in a year? <laughs> or something like that. So as you went through it, I, I really like that you were able to give us a, a visual of the location and go through the animation of that, the centipede and the rats and all those things that really give us a sense that this was not the glamorous uh, beginning. Whether it's true or not, it makes for a funny story. And also focusing on the name, because that's always been a uh, contention for everybody. Why is it called Toastmaster? Because it does confuse with a lot of different things too. And the manual too, I, I never really knew if it's true that they started with 12 and of course they went to, to 10. And I thought as you've said that, oh, it's like the European International is the decimal system and the U.S. is like non-decimal. So I thought that would be kind of interesting. That went through my mind as you said it is maybe as a point to mention it to you. Things to look at. One of the things that as speakers that they get up there, and I, I thought about it at the, the beginning, I'll point it out to you whether you feel that's of uh, value to you, is that when you go up there as a speaker, you just stand there. Now, in real life, not that this is not real life, but in real life, if you were being paid or if you were doing a TED conference, you go up there, you're animated, you're really in connecting with the people. And so I would think that better than being solid there and reflecting, which to me it's the deer in the headlights look, 
is being able to look around if you need to pause and get some uh, semblance of composure, just look around and make eye connections, even if you don't smile or you smile if you choose to. So that's one of the things that I, I want to bring to your attention. The other things that I looked at is that I thought that as you were going through that, whoever the other person was that you were talking to, that Ralph would also get a chance, Ralph Smith would get a chance to kind of give you a visual. Here's my visual. Here's where we're going to go. We're going to go to all the countries. We're going to go to 400,000 people. We're going to be able to get up there and really eliminate fear and uh, all those things that people have about being able to front. And that's my vision. I think that's a possibility. And you can have the rebuttal from George saying, no, impossible. But then at the end, when you conclude it, you could say, and so the metrics were, or the value was it, that actually came to happen. So now you tie it in as a story, you have a vision, and you really expand upon it. And at the end, it actually did come true. And you can uh, depict some actual metrics of that. There were several things that I, I liked about this, but I thought there were a lot of things that I think I would have liked differently. I, I thought you had great energy in this. It was a creative idea. It was obviously something that is dear to the hearts of Toastmasters. And as Rocky mentioned, there were things in there that I didn't know. Uh, I also agreed with Rocky that I think it would have been a more compelling speech if Ralph got a chance to respond to, to people. You talked about having the tension, but if you just have these constant complainers, you don't, it's only tension, and I don't think that that's an effective storytelling mood. Also, I didn't get as much of a sense of the time period. I got a sense that it was in an icky, smelly basement, but I didn't really get a sense of the, the time period and the, the problems people had. I think this was during the Depression or slightly after the Depression, and being able to speak well would certainly be a step up. Also, the fact that there weren't any women till 1980, maybe somebody could have complained about that a little. I thought that the, a lot of the humor, especially about the basements, horrors, were a little over the top. It was just too much for me. And again, I think I would have just liked more of a discussion between what Ralph thought he was doing and what other people had to complain about it or how they were affected by it. Also, how many people were there there you know, originally? Was, did, it, did he start with 12 disciples or whatever? One of the things I noticed immediately is you have great confidence when you come to the front of a room and begin to speak and throw out your speech. And of course your humor always comes through. I, I liked the dialogue. I agree, however, hearing Ralph's side of the story would be, would be good. And I, in terms of growth opportunities, I, and this could be me, I was uh, getting a little lost and not sure what Canada had to do with the story. And, Perhaps, as I said, maybe I let my mind wander a little, but I was trying to pay attention. And I know it had to do with international, but I thought there was a lot about Canada, and suddenly I said, well, what is the point of the Canada piece? And I also thought the description of the basement went on a little bit too long. And I think you brought it up again later, too. I like a picture at the beginning, however, I thought, well, basements could be nice, too. Timber speech brought that out very well. It did actually with the nature of the humor and the little issues of the 12 versus 10. It brought out some of the issues that Toastmasters has and how do we get here. Then you brought out very nicely how we dig it here. My main suggestions for improvement would be on the nature of the humorous manner. The chief concern here is about logic and the humor. I flown into Duluth International Airport and the only airport place that the airport was serving was the United States and Canada, so I know that it is international. And uh, to me the most glaring uh, thing about the humor was the name Egg McMuffin Masters. That could never have happened because Toastmasters was founded before McDonald's <laughs> and the Egg McMuffin was founded in the 60s and Toastmasters had already had its long history. They couldn't have created Egg McMuffin Masters. That was the most glaring 
place where the hero is Elijah 